In this video, we're going to get a little bit more in depth about the CNC interface on the Flashcut controller. So, you can see your material right here. All of my parts are nested in this general area. Uh, that being said, to ensure that your parts are going to fit, you want to hold down control, drive your torch around the perimeter of the parts, and that will <coughs> that will essentially allow you to see if your parts are going to fit on your material. If they do not, you'll need to shift them over. You can drive your torch essentially a quarter of an inch. As you can see in the upper right hand corner, my x-axis is changing. I drive it over oops, by an inch and right here my y-axis, I'm about a quarter of an inch shy looking down towards essentially the parking area of your controller. I can then hit set 0x and y and it will shift my entire drawing correlated off of that location. So essentially allowing me to change my material placement on on the sheet. Now looking over here Power Max 85 this is how you turn your digital torch light control on off. This, if you're going to use sampling, you need to turn this on before you start running code because when you're running code, it will not let you select it. This blue icon lets you know that your torch is on. I hit stop. Now, you can do a dry run. and Essentially, it will not turn the torch on. It will travel around the material. There's really no need to do a dry run. If you travel around the perimeter, make sure your parts are going to fit, ensuring as well that you're sheet is square on the material. This allows you as well to see what tool you used when you created this nest. Now if this is quarter inch and I've got half inch set in here, oh boy, I need to go back and change it. I go into cam, I go to my material, change it to quarter, select apply, bring it back into CNC, now I'm ready to go. Hit play and away I go starts from that hole again I hit stop very very handy I do generally I want to use touch offs unless I'm in a huge hurry I'll turn it off because it'll cut faster nozzle 65 amp shielded very important if you have a 45 amp tip in and you shove 65 amps through it it's not gonna last very long especially if you're shoving 125 amps through a 45 tip it doesn't last long at all uh, quality level best quality you can change that to production once again going to cam torch icon production check mark prepare the tool path for fabrication fastest cutting generally you do not want that set as fast as it just depends if you don't really care about your part cut it as fast as you can not a big deal I can change it from inches to millimeters see that feed rate change from inch to millimeters right there cut height 60 thousandths you want to raise a little bit right there say you know 0 0.08 generally 60 thousandths the height of a dime is what you're looking for now this is going to be over rode by your torch height control if you want to pierce it higher change this setting 0 0.170 safe height if you're worried about hitting something raise it a little bit no big deal. If, it, if you need to pierce longer, no big deal. Raise that. Voltage, you want it to cut higher. 130. Oh, I guess I'd change it up here. 130. Okay, well, let me change it, but you can change that. I swear to God. Amperage, 65 amps. This is a representation. You do need to change that on your machine pressure auto uh, you need to set that on the machine as well um, manually manually set this this is your curve width um, this is essentially how wide your torch is cutting now if you have already created g-code files you come in here load your file and you're good to go reset g-code this is what you would select if you wanted to start over I hit the reset starts from the beginning hit stop now if I want to jump ahead in a line of code, I then highlight this line, select, execute, jump to line, move machine now, machine will travel over to that. 
and that can be anywhere on the screen so now if I want to I can essentially go ahead and manually I can go back manually by using those keys right there you can also drive your machine around essentially using these buttons right here also you can move to point if I want to move to a coordinate two inches Y two inches I can then hit that and it will automatically travel back to that set point what's also neat as well is that if you wanted to go back to zero zero I can hit that hit that boom goes back to zero zero kind of cool now that being said I want to increase my jog speed I have this bar right here I want to slow it way down there wide open there rapid move you can essentially adjust that so that being said another cool thing is rip cut rip cut distance set this 60 hit play and boom torch fires start traveling obviously you don't want to do that right here once this cut is finished holding control drive it over to the edge of your material like so envision me being directly on the edge 60 inch wide sheet torch off as you can see over here hit play torch comes on starts traveling it's got the digital torch light on and essentially it's traveling right over there the feed rate 116 and we're good so that being said that is essentially how you rip cut move to point jog your machine you can also increment it in incrementally jog your machine or continuous where you hit the button and it continues to travel um, that being said always the first thing you do when you open up this screen is hit the plungers hit agree it's not going to connect because this is not a true table uh, that will allow your computer to connect to your controller itself um, also you want to home your machine you do not need to home your machine every time you minimize this screen but essentially you want to home it every time you close this window uh, I can go right here to system status as well and all your inputs are listed they're all labeled so if one of them is keyed essentially an e-stop button is keyed it will show you and the blue light will be elimin illuminated letting you know that that input is keyed so you can turn the grid off I actually do like running with the grid off as well 